Hi, this is Suraj Gopal. I am the Science VCS for Students with Disabilities High School Science. Uh, and this video breaks down and provides support for students with disabilities in the Unit 3 Living Environment Regents curriculum uh, provided by the NYC DOE. We are in Unit 3. We are on Day 20 doing the introduction to enzymes. Enzymes are a curious aspect of the curriculum because they um, they are our way into all kinds of internal processes that we take for granted all the time. And that makes them very difficult, I think, for students to understand and appreciate. Uh, they, they do so much for us. We take it all for granted. We can just operate throughout our lives. Um, but they are there in the background constantly. And so it's important to lead with that, I think, very often. There's a wonderful hook in this lesson about uh, catalyzing situations in your external life, uh, and then we're going to go internal when we talk about actual uh, enzymes uh, and biology. Uh, but this is uh, well supported already, I will say. In particular, we have the A1, uh, uh, sorry, the Atomi A level biology video. In CK12 chapter, we have an Amoeba Sisters video also about enzyme function. Uh, both of them are great. Uh, and I think. My initial approach, like it has been with other sections of the, of the living environment curriculum, is to provide guiding and grounding notes. Uh, so initially I wanted to define enzymes and substrates. And then after I defined enzymes and before substrates, I made sure to point out key characteristics. These are things that all students want to have in the backs of their heads before they go on to more complicated scenarios with enzymes. You have to remember Enzymes don't make reactions happen. They just speed them up. They can be used repeatedly So they don't get used up in any one reaction and they bind with the substrate to create what we call an enzyme substrate complex uh, And eventually that creates a product which is the goal of this entire process And this happens when the enzyme and substrate match in terms of shape You can see this matching in this diagram that I've included with the enzyme substrate complex We call this the lock and key method of creating products from substrates and enzymes. Um, you can see this process mirrored down the road uh, or depending on the order in which you tackle topics in your living environment class, um, this lock and key concept comes up again when we we're talking about antibodies dealing with viruses. Um, they, there's a lock and key sort of situation happening there as well. Uh, and so I thought it was also important, like in the slides, to just break down an example. I did it in a little bit plainer language than in parts of the slides, but I used amylase, which they did, and starch as my enzyme and substrate, respectively. Uh, and we want to talk about the practical application. This is probably the closest we get to seeing an enzyme at work, because so many of the other processes involving enzymes take place much farther in the body and are much more disconnected from our own behavior, or our, our conscious behavior, if you will. But we do eat food, and we know that we're doing it. Uh, and so using this particular example is great, I think, because uh, it lets people know, wow, if I didn't have this amylase in my, my saliva, uh, the whole process of eating food and extracting nutrients from that food would take a lot more effort and time. Um, this graph is very similar uh, to the catalyst graph that we encounter in chemistry. And so students may have seen this depending on the sequence, probably not because most students take chemistry after living environment, but there's a lot going on here. There's a lot to chew on. The basic idea is that you wanna isolate those red and blue curves and explain uh, that they depict the great difference in uh, tackling some sort of, uh, I guess, reaction that is catalyzed with and without the enzyme. All right, the enzyme greatly lowers, significantly lowers the amount of energy needed in order for that reaction to catalyze. And that's what's explained below here. Again, I relate back to chewing your food with no saliva. Uh, Small note about the induced fit versus the lock and key models of enzymes. The induced fit is a near match, whereas the lock and key is an exact match. Uh, in a near match, there will be an eventual fit after some initial work is done. You could say that the induced fit requires slightly greater energy than the lock and key method. Uh, 
like I've done in other sections as well, I've included support vocabulary for the region section. We want to understand that a catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction. Again, like an enzyme, it does not uh, create a reaction, but it speeds it up. Um, another, another important piece of language in, um, in the slides, uh, in particular the, the regions question, is a receptor that is a protein that binds to a specific molecule. And then finally, a hormone is a chemical the body creates for the purpose of managing itself and its activities. You could say a hormone is for bodily regulation. Uh, if we go to these regions questions, I hope that you'll see that those vocabulary words are highly relevant. If we look here, this is the classic type of regions question. So in order to pass on just some oral information in addition to that, um, so important for students to jump down to the question before reading this passage. So we've got this question down here, the protein endolysin begins to which group of, uh, sorry, belongs to which group of chemical substances. Now that I know that, I am instructing my students to annotate with that particular goal in mind to understand how endolysin figures into the situation with acne. So much more helpful than having students take the time to labor through this passage and possibly not even pick up uh, the relevant information and then go, ha go back and have, have to read again. I've found that a lot of my students with disabilities, particularly maybe they will dwell in paragraphs like a little bit aimlessly just because they don't understand quite what it is that they're supposed to be doing. And so it's very helpful to introduce that as a strategy. In addition to that strategy, I have my reliable regions tips and tricks, which include problem annotation. Uh, so the only thing that you would need to add to this verbally is that you want this problem annotation to take place before uh, any passages are read. And I would say that that's a good rule of thumb for all regions questions. Underline the question, box any important science vocabulary, so you might uh, box and Dollison in this case, and some of the answer choices have particular science vocabulary that's worth boxing. Eliminate any information that doesn't seem important to the question. That could mean that maybe you you would put an X next to parts of the passage that don't apply to endolysin. And then you could solve, you could cross out any obviously wrong um, answers, that should say, sorry, any obviously wrong answers. Use notes when necessary and do your best and bring detailed questions about the work to your teachers afterwards. I'm going to close with this point. So important for me over the course of the year to ensure that students are asking increasingly detailed and better questions about the material. That lets me know that they're holding on to uh, aspects of the lesson um, and they're implementing problem solving strategies. They're getting better at communicating their understandings uh, and they're also becoming, uh, I would say, interdependent. They're looking at their notes. Um, they're engaging in a problem solving strategy. All of that happens before the moment when they come and talk to me. So this is my support for uh, Unit 3, Day 20 of Living Environment Regions Curriculum. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. Thank you.